spruce up this Dollar Tree trick or treat sign. Keep watching. So I'm going to take some jute cord, some scraps of burlap, some scrapbook paper of whatever size, this little Dollar Tree wooden sign, and a thrifted frame. It used to have a picture of a cow on it, but I took the picture off with some fingernail polish remover. Now I'm going to take some of this chalkboard paint. It's black. I'm going to use it to go on the inside of this frame to make it a solid black background. Excuse my voice and my sniffling. If that happens in this video, I do offer my sincerest apologies, but I'm having some allergy issues. And I didn't want to miss the opportunity to get my Halloween videos up because Christmas videos will be coming soon. So I'm just going to edge around here because I want to keep the outside of that galvanized frame showing. You don't have to, you can use whatever frame you want. If you have a frame that's a large enough frame to sit your trick or treat sign down into, you can paint the entire thing black right over the glass if you choose or you can spray paint it however you wish to do it. I just like the idea since I have a rustic farmhouse theme in my house, of having a little bit of that galvanized still showing through. So I'm just going to do two good coats all the way around here. After I made this video, uh, I subscribed to lots of crafters. So I was watching some of the other people that I subscribed to and I'd be darned if I didn't pull up a video of another crafter and she had done a trick-or-treat sign with the exact same coloring as mine. So I just want to say I have no intention of copying anybody. I don't want to take credit for being the only person who's ever done this either. Let's just say that artistic minds think alike. Alright, so I've removed the cord from my trick-or-treat wooden sign and placed it down on a piece of paper so that I can begin painting. I'm going to fill in these holes in the top first with some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and allow that to dry. This won't be hanging so I won't need a hanger. It's just going to be glued down inside the frame. All right, so you're going to see a switch in my paint brushes here. I originally started off with this one, and it was still a bit too stiff from the last time I used it. If you don't close your plastic bag all the way up and get as much air as possible out of it, your brush will dry out. So I had to wash it and set it aside. And So I'm going to use this brush, which, by the way, I love. It came in a pack of two, I think, from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use my Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint all over this sign. I'm going in the cracks and the corners so I get a solid white coverage. I did two coats and allowed it to dry. Probably could have gotten away with one coat. You could do this in any color that you want. Since I have a farmhouse rustic theme in my house, I thought that the white would be nice against the black. Everything is drying. I am going to make the banner for the top. So I am just making a square and then cutting out triangles to use as a pattern for my fabric and my scrapbook paper. So you're just going to pick out whichever types of paper that you like. I think a variety is a better look, but you can use whatever you want. You could use all of the burlap, or you could use burlap and checkerboard, or whatever you want to use. I've just chosen three different types of papers. 
and then my burlap. And I'm going to cut out two of each one. The jute cord is going to be the rope that I glue everything onto. This is why it's good to hang on to scraps because you never know what you might need it for. And this worked out great. This scrapbook paper came from the little pads that come from Target. And I think that every year they have different designs in those little pads. Lay out your pattern the way that you like. And then lay out your twine. Turn each one of those over one at a time and put a bead of hot glue down the edge and just make sure that it's tapped into place and that's all you have to do for that. You can space them out. I have just a tiny bit of space between mine or you can overlap them if you want or you can leave a bigger space depending on the size of your triangles. Now we're going to put the sign down on the frame and I'm going to use hot glue and a little bit of Fix-All, which is the Dollar Tree brand super glue. It's kind of a, a gel in a tube. And make sure I have it centered first and then pop it into place. going to take a little while for that fix-all to really get a good grip so I'm just pressing it down so that the hot glue will hold it until that fix-all does what it needs to do. You're going to see me overlay this with a piece of cardboard and then put down my paint can on top to hold everything in place so it doesn't pop up. All right, when it's all said and done and that glue has had a good day to dry, you can come in here and put your banner on the top. Now, because I made it big enough where it wouldn't be hanging, I just went ahead and, and glued it down on there. Just a dot of hot glue and a clamp until the glue has set up, and then I've trimmed off my rope. So it does hang over the edge just a little. I really felt like I needed something else here, so I went back and colored these pumpkins orange. So I used a orange with a dot of brown. This is burnt umber and pumpkin orange. They are acrylic paints. Mix those well together, and then I got a little flat edge brush and applied them carefully to my pumpkins. It's up to you. If you like a brighter orange, go ahead and just use the plain orange. I needed it just a little bit darker. So I'm just carefully going in there and making sure that I'm only getting the top surface. I'm not bothering going around the edges and all that because it should just be too easy at this point to make a mistake and mess up my black background. So I'm just being sure to go and just tap that and put that on the top. Now I want to put the natural curves of a pumpkin in the bottom, so I'm just making some little curves here. You can make yours flat or whatever you want to do there. One solid curve, whatever.
And I'm just being sure to get just enough on there that I don't leave streaks, streaks, <laughs> but I also do not want to blob it on and make a mistake that I can't fix or I can't easily fix. And you can fix anything with paint pretty much, but I don't want to do that. Just, I'd rather be careful and do it right the first time. So now I have my little orange pumpkins with my white words. If you wanted to, you could go in there with a black marker or some black paint and separate your letters and separate the tops of the pumpkins and, you know, that sort of thing if you really wanted it to stand out more. But I, I like the idea of it looking just, you know, rustic and simple. And it fits in really well with the rest of my black, white, and orange Halloween decor. So there's my Halloween tree that I did in a previous project. And there's my sign. There's a shadow box sign that I've done recently. I've actually done two shadow boxes for this Halloween 2020 series. Be sure that you check out the Halloween series playlist so that you can catch up on everything that we've done. Because there are not very many more Halloween videos coming. And then we'll be going on straight into Christmas. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed doing it for you. Thanks for stopping by and I hope you subscribe so you can see more projects. We'll see you again soon. Bye.